This is part two of our video, how to price your products for your online business. In our last video, we talked about the most simple pricing strategy called cost-based pricing. If you haven't watched the part one video yet, you may click the link up in this video or visit my channel because today is a continuation of the type of pricing strategy that you can use for your online business. If you want to learn, stick around and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Yo Mama Becha here and welcome back to my channel. If you want to know how you can be successful in your online selling, I give tips, best practices, tutorials, and other interesting things. So please consider subscribing and pakiclick po yung bell notification para updated ka sa aking mga bagong videos. Pricing of your product is one of the decisions you will make as a business owner. It impacts almost every aspect of your online store or online business. And para masustain mo yung online negosyo mo, kailangan natin yung pricing strategy and find a sustainable base price. So let's jump into the type of pricing strategy that you can use. And I hope that by the end of this video, you can implement it to your online business. So ito yung pangalawa na i-discuss natin today. It's another type of pricing strategy e-commerce businesses uses. So ang tawag po dito ay competition-based pricing. Tinatawag rin itong market-based pricing and isa to sa commonly used pricing strategy or formula na ginagamit ng mga online businesses out there. Ang pinagkaiba lang dito sa cost-based pricing is medyo mas complex po ang competition-based pricing kumpara sa cost-based pricing dahil ito po ay nagfo-focus in researching your competitor's niche or niche. So alamin po muna natin ano nga ba itong niche or niche. For definition po, kapag sinabi nating niche, ito ay specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or kung services naman ang ino-offer mo. So katulad ko po, no, ang niche ko po is fashion. So that's the type of product that I sell online. Before we talk more about the competition or market-based pricing, let me ask every one of you here. Bilang online seller, is there a need for us to be aware of our competitors? Yes or no? So pakisagot po sa iba ba, mag-comment po kayo sa video na ito. I appreciate if you can comment, let me know your thoughts. Dahil ma-share ko lang po, one time umaten po ako ng isang webinar. And isa sa mga speakers doon talk about market competition. Sinabi niya doon na kung ikaw ay isang baguhang seller, we do not need to be aware of our competition. Although itong speaker na to ay may point naman, no? Somehow, but bilang 10 years na po na nagbebenta online, from my point of view, you need to be aware of your competitors. Bakit? Dahil ang e-commerce landscape po dito sa Pilipinas or even in Southeast Asia, there are tons of active sellers na po online. And to be part of this huge jungle, each seller need to compete at least 10 to 15, minsan pa nga, isang niche nyo lang, isang product nyo lang, benteng seller na kayo nagbebenta online. So, we cannot ignore the market competition. Kahit bagong seller ka pa lang, from my point of view, again, wag mo siyang i-ignore. Dahil consumers or customers care heavily about the price and they compare prices with all the time. Diba? Kahit kayo, pumunta kayo sa Lazada app, you tried searching a certain product, gusto mong bumili ng damit, gusto mong bumili ng 
bagong uh, pan, no? Hindi naman po tayo kaagad bumibili, right? Kasi gusto natin makakuha ng magandang deal. And of course, we tend to compare each and every one na nagsesell nito sa product na hinahanap mo. Okay? So, how does this competition or market pricing work? So, ang ginawa ko po mga ka-sellers sa mga nanonood today, I drilled it down. Ginawa ko siyang step by step para mas lalo nating maintindihan and masunod kung ano yung gagawin natin if you would want to apply itong competition or market-based pricing. Of course, step number one is to know your competitors. You need to analyze other sellers, other brands who are selling products na kapareho mo. Sellers who are selling products of the same niche or niche. Number two, note down the prices that they have set to their products. So, may, madali naman po itong intindihin, no? Pag sinabi natin, writing down the prices na sinet nila sa kanilang products, all you need to do is to manually look through your competitor's store or your competitor's website and check their prices one by one. That way, you will get a good understanding of the market that you, you're operating even if it takes some time. Dito sa Pilipinas, I'm not really sure or I'm not aware of any price tracking tool. But if you are a seller in, in Amazon or any other international company, meron po silang mga ginagamit na price tracking tool. So yung price tracking tool, nagko-collect po siya ng data about your competitors' prices for you without the manual work. Pero sa atin, no, since wala pa akong nakitang ganung tool dito sa Pilipinas, you can simply manually uh, check or look yung mga uh, competitor mo tapos i-check mo yung pricing niya one by one. It may take some time, pero at the end of at the end of it all, mas mas it will give you uh, a good idea kung ano yung average price na na ipepresyo mo sa iyong produkto or sa iyong product niche. Punta naman tayo sa number three. Compare it against the cost that it takes you to make a sale. So, pwede nating i-apply no, yung napag-aralan natin or yung natutunan natin from our previous video dun sa uh, cost base. No? So, ano yung mga cost or expenses na na-incur mo sa product na yon. So, you have to compare it para makita mo kung bebenta ka nga ba sa product na ito. And at the same time, makakapag-differentiate ka between dito sa dalawa kung meron ka pa nga bang wiggle room, kapag sinasabi natin wiggle room, hanggang saan mo siya pwedeng ibaba yung presyo mo against your competitor pero at the same time ay may kita ka pa din. Okay? So I hope na intindihan niyo po yung sinabi nating comparing it against the cost that it takes you to make a sale. Siya ka yung difference between those two para magkaroon ka pa rin ng wiggle room. Our next step of course is to set your price. So, this time, of course, you will have your own decision na kung up to how much you can price your item. And of course, with checking all the, all the necessary factors for you to be able to compete in a fair and competitive pricing. So let's take a look at an example in our screen right now para mas lalo po nating maintindihan. So the other day, dahil nasiraan po kami ng chair, katulad ng chair na nasa likod ko, so I was looking for the same chair and I was looking for a better deal 
online sa Lazada. So, may dalawa tayong seller na nakita ko sa chair na ito. So, ikumpara lang natin, we are going to talk about seller A and C, si seller B. Okay, so kung nakikita nyo po, no, they are selling the same product item. Yan. So si seller A, okay, nag-join siya sa 3-3 birthday opening sale ni Lazada, no? But we are gonna talk about the seller price or selling price muna. Si seller A, ang benta niya dito is 919 pesos with 5,019 ratings and 214 answered questions. Puntahan naman natin si seller B. Ang benta niya is 859 pesos with 20 ratings. If we are going to compare the two, you would really notice that bago lang kakapasok sa market itong si seller B just because may 20 ratings pa lang siya. And ang bentahan niya of the same product is 859 which is much lower to the first seller, si seller A, dahil si seller A, ang benta niya po is 919 pesos. So, ano ang sinasabi natin dito? Can we take a look at this and say na fair and competitive yung pricing nitong dalawa? Yes or no? Okay? So, if you think of it, magkano lang ang difference ng dalawang seller na ito? 919 And 8.59. So, pag kinalkyo natin yan, o, oh, ayan. Sabi ko sa inyo, mahina-hina tayo sa mat, ano? 8.59. So, may 60 pesos lang na difference between the two competitors or the two competition selling the same chair. So, for seller B, nakikita ko dito, is it's either, kasi wala naman tayo sa, wala naman tayong detalye no, kung sino nga ba to si seller B. But we are going to make assumptions na dahil naibenta niya to ng 859 compared sa napakarami ng naibenta, 5,000 ratings pa, actually more pa yan, na 919, then that means seller B has that 60 pesos wiggle room na maibaba dito sa presyuhan nila enough for him to be able to sell it on a competitive uh, item which is itong chair. So, ang competitive pricing strategy or itong market-based pricing strategy doesn't mean na kailangan mong i-undercut yung competitor mo and try to lower your prices hanggang yung margin mo ay napakanipis na. Hindi naman po kasi ganon. Kasi kapag ginawa mo yan, wala nang magbabenefit. No? So you are going to the risk of racing to the bottom, which is hindi na siya beneficial to everybody selling the same Uh, the same product or the same chair na, sina na pinakita natin. So, ano yung mga advantage of this strategy? Of course, isa sa advantage nito is you are selling your products around the market price. No, fair competition siya. Ang disadvantage naman nito, sa so nasabi ko kanina, is if you are one of those na nagpo-pursue sa competitive pricing tapos ina-undercut mo yung competitor mo, di ba, mataas ang risk mo na hindi ka nakikita kasi you are gonna enter na yung tinatawag nating race to the bottom. So, pababaan na. 
if you opt to use a competition-based pricing strategy for your business, kailangan mong maging careful na hindi pasukin itong race to bottom na sinasabi ko. Usually kasi nangyayari ito sa mga baguhang online business. Now, bagong umenter ng niche and then they try to position their brand, their brand as the lowest price point. So, nangyayari dyan, kapag multiple store or multiple sellers are doing this at the same time, sinislash yung profit margins then, which means you need to sell more products para ma-earn mo yung same amount ng profit ng iyong competitor. Ang pricing strategy po requires time and effort to implement. But it definitely will help your online business to come up with prices that are fair to you and your customers. So sa mga beginners na ating followers, what I advise is to find new ways to attract customers rather than slashing prices. Because offering everything at a low price can have a negative impact sa online store mo. So dito papasok yung mga USP na paulit-ulit kong sinasabi no, yung unique selling point. Pwede mo siyang ipasok. Follow for part 3 of our pricing strategy which will be available next week. And this strategy, by the way, yung competition or market-based pricing strategy is not only applicable sa mga existing sellers na na meron tayo dyan. So kung bago ka lang sa akang video, sa akang channel, and you are in the process of researching kung anong klaseng produkto ang, ang gusto mong ibenta, this competition-based or market-based pricing strategy can also help you decide kung anong mga produkto ang um, maibebenta mo online because unang-una, you can check it, you can check your competition, you can check yung pinaka-cheapest supplier para malaki yung wiggle room mo na mag-markup um, during the launch of your product. This tutorial, by the way, is made from Canva in which I am now an official partner of Canva, the best drag-and-drop tool that online sellers out there can use for their store decorations, videos, and creatives. So there's a link down below. Please feel free to sign up with Canva. Libre po yan. But if you want to maximize the rest of the Canva features, you can sign up for Canva Pro at an affordable price. I will see you in my next tutorial. See you!